This tutorial will look at the use of frames uh, within web design. First of all, what is a frame? And secondly, how are we going to use them? Um, and how might we employ them throughout our web design? Um, first of all, a frame, we're very used to seeing frames within um, websites. Frames are when you see a split um, within an actual window. So really what a frame does allows us to break a window up into several different sections. So quite often, if we have a scroll bar over here, as you can see on the right hand side, scrolling up and down, this page will move, whereas this page here stays static. You quite often see different uh, layouts, but a frame is when you split your page up into several sections. And what actually happens here is that each section, in other words here, and here will be an individual page drawn up in expression. So it just is a way of dividing it up into unique sections and then calling up pages as we need them. So if I went Q Commons, this page here will change. Or if I went uh, Q Union, this page here will change. These ones more than likely won't. We can if we want to, but they more than likely won't change. Okay. Uh, there are many different layouts when it comes to frames. And there are also, there's a thing called internal frames, which we've used already with, um, with Google Maps, etc., which allow us to insert a frame right in the middle of our page. Um, but in these ones here, you can see quite often there's different sections. We can change the color like we do in tables of backgrounds and background sections. But you'll see quite often you'll see if if needs be to uh, implement scroll bars in different sections as well. So you'll see different things moving on. So in this case here, there's a frame across the top, which the top doesn't ever change. And then there's a frame down along the side, which the side does never change. This is the, probably the most common type of, uh, of frame in use today. Um, but what we'll do over the next uh, five or 10 minutes is we'll introduce how to create a frame and how we can decide on which frames are best for us and so on. OK, so in our case here, we're going to jump out into expression and then we'll start dealing with, with frames. What I've done to facilitate this is I've actually split the page that we've been dealing with all throughout all the tutorials up until now from right right up through through to uh, tutorial 12. So I've split that one large page into sections. I've split it into introduction, headlines, font, lists, tables, links and images. So I've split it up into several different pages and all I did there was just literally copied and pasted from the the main page into uh, two, four, six, seven separate pages. So we're going to use that in today's uh, example. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a, a frames page. So I'm going to go file new. Now, it's important to go file new as opposed to just go new page here because this gives us more options. File new and I'm going to go page. Now, what it will do is it'll give me a dialog box. And in this dialog box, you'll see that there's different types of pages we can create. General page, which is the one we've been using so far. But you can also see ASP, CSS and style sheets. All of these are um, the way we lay out our page and add behavior to our page. But the one we're going to focus on today is frames pages. OK, so when I click on frame pages here, it gives me a number of different layouts for frame pages. So. You know, as I mentioned earlier on, the banner and content with your heading up on top and your menu down along the side and your main content page here. This is probably the most common one. So it's probably the one we're going to use in a few minutes. But just to look at these ones here, there's content and just content here, which allows us to put in a, um, a menu in here or content over here. Footers just allows a footer footnote, which is exactly the same, except the section is a little bit bigger on the bottom header header, footer and content, which is quite similar to our banner and content, but it has a footer section on the bottom. Uh, horizontal split, uh, nested hierarchy, top down and then a vertical split. Now, you might say to yourself, well, hold on, the type of frame or the layout I want is not there. Well, to be quite honest, these are just the basic ones. What we can actually do from these is we can add other frames if we want to. And I will do that later on in this example that we're going to use today. I'm going to add maybe a footer frame to the bottom of this. And you might say, well, why don't you just go for this? Well, what I'm actually going to do is something similar to this where my header goes all the way across the top, where my 
menu section goes all the way to the bottom and then my footer is going to go just across here so it's not going to be exactly the same as this but uh, something similar to that my footer is going to be placed across the bottom i'll do this later on okay so i'm going to start off with this one here which allows us to create um our uh split sections here like this one here and i'm just going to go okay now once we create our frame page, what we've got is we've got what's known as a frame index, which is our, our main frame. From there, we're going to call up uh, pages. Okay. So what I'm going to do here in this is I'm going to go new page up on top because I'm going to create a new header section. I'm going to create a new menu section. So I'm going to go new page there, but I'm going to call up an initial page here. So what I, what I would normally do uh, is set the initial page to the page that I've been creating throughout the whole course, which would be, in my case, it was called P. Horn. Um, but what I'm going to do today is I'm going to actually call up my introduction section, which is the first page. Now, there's not much in it, but the first page that's going to appear as part of my menu. So I'm going to call that up. So I'm just going to go set initial page. And I have a list of a whole, all these pages. I'm going to go to introduction. OK, so that sets my initial page to introduction. What I'm going to do then on top is I'm going to create um, a kind of a header section, OK, uh, and I'll create a footer later on as well, as I said, OK, but my header section, I'm going to put in a table, which is going to have um, a three by one. On the left hand side, I'm just going to insert a picture. In fact, I'm going to insert three pictures in, the, in total. So I'll put all three of them together rather than doing it separately. OK, so I'm going to put in this one, this one and. This one. Okay. So here's my three pictures going in together. Now, ordinarily, as I mentioned before, I will put in alternative text, but in, just for the to make this example a little bit quicker, I'm not going to do that for all three of these images. So I'm just going to go OK, OK and OK. I'm going to just drag up frame down a little bit so I can give a little bit of room here. That to the left, this to the center. I'm going to set, I've got them in this into the center. So I've got three cells here. I'm going to just take the right cell or left cell here. Sorry. I'm going to go cell properties. I'm going to say percentage 25% exactly the same with the one on the right so that means that this one and this one will be the same size so that means that when I center my heading in here it will actually be centered across my screen okay so I'm going to go style properties and go 25% here as well make sure it's in percent apply okay I'm going to bring this to the right this to the center and this to the left okay so now when I just, if I just save this for a second, it'll ask me to save my three pages, okay? Title. Let me go think about this. Menu. Now, when I go to save my actual full page, um, my home page should always be called index, but I've already got an index in this folder, so I'm not going to call it index. I'm going to call it index one just to uh, just to differentiate it from another example I've got in here. So I'm just going to save that. OK. So when I preview this, this is the way my page looks at the moment. Okay, so I've got my logo on the left, my title in the middle, my logo on the right, and I've got my content in here. I've got nothing in here at the moment. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to add my um, menu in here so I can I can work with uh, work, work with that. Now my menu is going to have introduction, headlines, font, lists, tables, links and images in there. So it's going to be a total of two, four, six, seven items in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a, a table in here which is going to be seven high.
Okay. So in there, I'm just going to type in the words. Of course, I can use the interactive buttons that I've got before. And in a tutorial, which is yet to come, um, what tutorial would it be? It would be... Menus in CSS, which is tutorial 15. In tutorial 15, I'll show you how to put in pop down menus, etc. OK, so for the moment, I'm just going to type in my 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 pages. OK, so I'm going to type in home, which is going to bring me to introduction. OK, I'm going to type in headlines. I'm going to type in font. Lists. Tables. Links and images. Later on, I'm actually going to add other pages which I haven't yet created yet. So I'm going to just add one more because it's going to be the next section I'm going to do straight after this. So it's the next, um, this is going to be tutorial 14 where I deal with form. So I'm just going to add one more insert uh, row below and I'm just going to type in forms. Now, I haven't got a page called forms yet. But I'm going to put a link in for it. OK, so when I do create it, it will uh, it will go in there. OK, so what I've got now when I just look at this is I've got starting to shape up now with regards to how my page looks. OK, at the moment, these links don't work. I haven't created links for them yet, but I'm going to do that in a second. OK, um, so I'm going to just jump back into expression and we're going to create our links and I'll show you how simple it is. OK, so in our case here, I'm going to right click and I'm going to go. Um, hyperlink as per normal. I'm going to do the same for every one of them. Now, what I want to do is really importantly is I want to, when I click on this link here, I want to open up a page in here, okay, which is in my main content page, okay. So I wanted to open up in there. What page do I want to open up when I click on home? I wanted to open up actually the introduction page. So, and I'm just going to go okay. Now, if that's all I do, we'll see how that works, okay. And we'll see, maybe it won't work the way we want it to. Okay, so when I click on home here, what actually happens, it puts my page in here. Okay, so with frames, I have to learn one other thing and something we, we actually know already, something that we've actually looked at in a previous uh, tutorial about links. So what I'm going to do, the only thing I'm going to change here is I'm going to go hyperlink properties. I'm still going to open up introduction, but I'm going to go to target frame. Now we've done this before when we were dealing with opening up uh, link in a new tab or a new window okay so i'm going to go target frame and the difference here is it shows me my frame page now where do i want it to open up i want it to open up in here okay so i can just literally click on this image here and it will say that's exactly where i want it to open up so it says in my main frame which is where i want now if i go set as page default it means that every link that i put in here will automatically open up in here which is in this case exactly what I want to do. OK, so I'm going to go set as default. All right, and I'm going to go OK. I'm going to go OK. I'm going to save it and then I'm going to preview it and see that it works properly this time. OK, so when I click on my link for home, the page opens up here. Now it's already in there, so uh, it won't it won't change that. But you'll see in a minute when I go down to the rest of these lists, it will change this page in here to the appropriate page. OK, so I'm going to just go to headlines and I'm going to do this very quickly or as quickly as I can do hyperlink. Click on headlines. Now I'm going to go target frame. All right. And it says page default main. So I don't need to go in here for this one. So I'm just going to go. OK. And I'm going to do the same for all of them. OK, so I'm going to go font hyperlink. Click on font. OK. As I've got all these pages open up here on top, it's very simple for me to create my menu because all of my actual pages are already open and therefore appear right up here on top. OK, so lists. OK, rather than me searching that folder for them in alphabetical order, I can just see them up here on top and they appear, as I say, in alphabetical order as well. Tables. Links. images okay 
Now the last one here, forms, I haven't created this page yet. So when I create this hyperlink, we've seen this before, I can actually link to a page that I haven't yet created. I'm going to call it forms.html. So uh, let's type it in right actually, forms. HTML. Now this link won't work at the moment because the page is not yet created. But as when in the tutorial that I do uh, next, when I want to create my forms um, page, this will automatically find it if it's in the same folder. So I can um, work away on that. So I'm just going to save this and then I'm going to preview it. And I'm going to go home, which headline, font, lists, tables, links, images. You can see images goes on a bit and then forms. It doesn't work because it's not there yet. I haven't created it yet. OK, but that's simply how this works. And it's it's very straightforward. OK, so what I'm going to do is, you know, there's my the goods of my uh, frame page created. Now, I'm still going to play around with a few things that I need to have a look at. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add another frame to the bottom here. OK, and the frame I'm going to add to the bottom is if I go format and then I look down here underneath frames, I can see split frame. So I can actually split this frame here. You've, you can see I'm actually in the bottom section down here because the page is highlighted with a little green highlight around the outside. So if I go split frame, it's going to ask me, do I want to split into columns or into rows? And in my case, I want to split into rows because I'm going to put a footer um, down here in the bottom and I'm going to go OK. I'm going to go new page. So I'm going to create a brand new page. I don't want it an equal split. So I'm going to just grab this and drag it down. OK. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in just to make life easier on myself. I'm going to put in a little table in here. OK, like this. And in the, I'm going to put in two images. OK, uh, insert picture from file. Two images I'm going to put in are this one and this one. I'm just going to move them to the right and to the left. Save my page. It's going to ask me for a name for this one here, which I'm going to call it footer because I haven't created that page already. So I'm going to call it footer. And I preview it. This is the way my page looks at the moment. Now, a couple of things I'm going to just look at here is, first of all, do I need this to be so big? Do I need my title to be so big, my actual heading page to be so big? Do I need these borders to be showing up? OK, and when it comes to this, do I want a scroll bar appearing here? Now, you'll see in this case here for introduction, there's no scroll, scroll bar. But if I click on images, a scroll bar appears because it's required in this particular page because it's quite a long page. OK, if I go links, not quite long enough. OK, but if my page was smaller or if my screen was smaller, it would require it when the page gets smaller, as you can see like this. OK, so. I'm going to have a look at these properties. We're nearly finished with, with, with frames, but we're not quite there yet. OK, so in our case here, I'm going to go back to um, expression. and I'm going to just tidy up these last few things here. Uh, the first thing I'm going to look at is I'm going to just right click my top frame up here. All right. And I'm going to go frame properties. OK, so this is called banner. This actual frame is called banner. The page that it's dragging up is called title. So if I ever wanted to change that to another page, I can do it by just browsing. OK, long descriptions and titles. Should I include them in there? Absolutely. So your title is what appears up on if this page would views and viewed on its own up here. OK, right up in the very, very top of your um, browser. OK, so the title. I would always um, encourage people to put a title on every page, even if the title isn't visible, because Google will see it. So titles should be keyword rich. 
height is 124. Do I need it to be 124? Probably not. With, and I'll come back and change this in a minute, but width and height um, of the margins. You can see out around the outside here, there's a spacing. And to be quite honest, on certain pages, it's good to have a spacing. It's good to have a spacing here with your main page. It's good to have a spacing here, probably with your, uh, with your menu. I don't know if I need the spacing here. In fact, I'm going to say I don't. So I'm going to bring that down to zero, zero. Okay. I'm going to go okay. And you can see that everything moves right up to the top of the page. Then I'm going to grab this and drag it up. Okay. So that's going to be the height of my page. I'm going to just save it and preview it here for a second. Much better. All right. Everything is tighter up. It gives me more space on the screen. You can see everything moving up a little bit here. Okay, so I'm going to say I'm happy as Larry with um, with my title at the moment. I'm going to go back and just have a look at the frame properties again. See if I covered everything I need to. Okay, so I'm after putting in a title, long description. Yes, do that as well. It's good for your your uh, search engine. I'm after grabbing the bar and dragging up, so which leaves us 91 pixels high. These are set to being zero. Now the only options left here are resizable in browser. Now, what that means is if I say yes, resizable in browser and go OK, that means that when a user comes to this, they can actually grab this bar and make it bigger or smaller. Do you want them to give give the user the capability and, you know, the, the authority to do that? You know, in my case with the header, I'm going to say no, but maybe over here with your uh, with other bars here, yeah, maybe, because if they're looking at it on a mobile device, they might need more space to be able to read your menu properly or read your content properly. But I'm going to say with this one here, I'm going to say not resizable in browser for my top frame, okay? So I'm going to say taking that out there. Now that also means that I can't drag it from the other side either. So the next question is asking me is, do I need a scroll bar on this particular, um, this particular frame? The answer is no, because I've set this to be 91. I made sure that the content that's going to be in my header frame is, is always going to be visible if it shows 91. So therefore, scroll bar, I'm going to say never. The three options for scroll bar, if needed, never or always. Okay. And to be quite honest, on my header and on my footer, I'm going to control the size of them. So I'm going to say those height and pixels. So I'm going to say both of those are going to be never. And on my content here and here, I'm going to say if needed. Okay. So I'm going to say never here. Frame page, I'm going to leave, I'm going to do all four frames and then come back to frame page. And um, because the frame page here uh, affects all four of them. So I'm going to do that when I get to the last one here. So I'm just going to go okay for the moment. So I'm going to say my top one, I'm delighted with. I'm going to right click my menu page. I'm going to have a look at these ones here. Should I put in a title? Yes, always. So put in a keyword rich title in here. And that's my content. My menu page is called up there. That's fine. It's 150. Does it need to be that wide? Um, I'm going to say probably not. It could be a little bit thinner. So I could actually bring it into maybe 130. Or I could do what I did last time by just um, grabbing it here and dragging it in. Okay. So I'm going to turn around and say, frame properties here. Anything else I need to change here? I'm going to leave the margins on this here, okay, because it's quite nice to have a little bit of space around the outside to make everything legible. Um, and then on top of that, I'm going to say if needed for this. And as I said, I'll come back to frame page and I do deal with the last one. So the next one here, right click frame properties. I do this for all four of them. Make sure always keyword Which, okay, um, resizable in browser, yes, if needed, yes, okay, leave my margins, column width, okay, everything else is good there. And then the last one here, I'm just going to have a quick look at this image here. It's only an image at the moment, um, so properties here is, and the reason I'm doing this is to find out the height of this, it's 92, so my um, tab has got to be at least 92. So I'm going to go frame properties. Height in percent in pixels. 95. Just give it a bit more space. Um, I'm going to say I don't need margins here on this one. So I'm going to push everything right to the very edge of it here. Um, never. 
resize my browser no and frame page okay i'll come back to that in a second okay so i'm going to have a quick look at what i've done so far okay now my page is starting to take structure which is very good okay so if i go and go into images here you can see that the scroll bar appears for images but not for other ones you can see there's no scroll bar here at the moment on my menu but if i was dealing with a much much smaller screen you know you would notice that when i get smaller and i'm much smaller it will start to put in as you can see when my screen gets very small it will show a scroll bar when needed okay which is exactly what i want there with that okay the last thing i'm going to look at is i'm going to go back in and i'm going to look at the frames page the overall frames page here uh, property and you can see that this will uh, mainly look at whether i need these uh, gray bars going around some people like them some people dislike them it's up to yourself so i'm just going to right click this here and go frame properties and i'm going to go into the frame frame page now <clears throat> when i go into frame page what happens in here is only two options but it, it affects all of my frames on the screen here so show borders are not show borders okay that's simply a tick box here so if I want to take out the borders, I take them out and you'll notice that the frame spacing goes down to zero. So it gets rid of the, the border size. If I want to leave them in, I can increase my border size or decrease my border size. And if I really want to play around with this, I can actually change the color and change the effect and change the look of my borders through CSS, which will be something that we might look at later on in one of the tutorials. OK, so I'm going to take out the borders for the moment. I'm going to go OK. Now it takes them out. It doesn't it leaves them in here when i'm looking at it in expression but if you notice when i go into my browser into chrome it will take them out okay so therefore the page looks like this okay so for all intents and purposes at this view here it's difficult to see whether there's frames here or not um but when i click on other pages which need um longer longer views you can see it disappears like that okay and this works very very well now, one of the beauties of a frames page is that I only have to create one menu. If I have 150 pages, I still only have one menu, okay? Or have the potential for one menu. But if I wasn't using frames, um, if I have 150 pages, I'll have 150 menus. So have, if I wanted to change one thing in my menu, it would have to be changed 150 times, okay? Whereas with frames, um, I can only change it once or I only have to change it once. Um, so that kind of concludes this, this tutorial on frames and I hope you find it useful.